I want to start off by saying thank y'all so much. We just hit 3,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone. I want to say thank you again, and hopefully y'all like the video. Here's some of my favorite comments. I want to say thank you to all those who do comment and interact in my videos, even when I'm not right. I want to answer a couple of the questions I've received in the comments. Have you ever been stung by Africanized killer bees yet? I got attacked by them on Painsbury. I didn't go to the hospital, but spent two weeks recuperating. DIY. I'm new to North Florida and didn't know the university was studying the toxicity of species here. That is correct. The University of Florida studies insects and entomology very in depth. They have lots of uh, programs here. I've met many of the great people in those programs. And uh, yes, we do that. Well, technically, no, I can't verify that I've ever been stung by the Africanized honeybee. I have been stung by the European honeybee, which is a very close relative and is the most common bee species that is around and used to pollinate many crops. So they're a very important species. However, I think the primary difference between Africanized honeybees and European honeybees is just their tendency to defend their colony. They defend it with larger swarms and far more aggressive behavior, willing to just basically go kamikaze and die to save the colony, which is in some ways a great trait for a species to have in order to survive. It kind of seems like an oxymoron that they're willing to commit suicide to survive, but in some cases that is the most effective way to protect the colony. Adaptation is the capitalization of utilizable resources, and sometimes a managed sacrifice can act as a resource. Can stupid disease spread by internet? Like attracts like, stupid is as stupid does. As a matter of fact, it seems to have already infected you. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. This comment was posted on my video of me getting stung by a yellow jacket. Do they die after they sting? They do not typically die after they sting. However, extra stress can always lead to the demise of these insects. So you wanna be extra careful when handling these insects. In fact, just leave them alone. Can you get stung by the tarantula hawk wasp? Yes, you can get stung by the tarantula hawk wasp. Will I get stung by the tarantula hawk wasp? Possibly. However, they're not typically found in Florida, even though the maps and ranges online say that they are in Florida. I've never seen one in Florida. If I ever run across one, absolutely I will embark on that journey. I am not intimidated by the tarantula hawk. In fact, it just is probably similar to many of the other insect stings I've received. But I do want to see firsthand what the effects of the tarantula hawk sting actually are. However, I have been stung by a few other spider wasp species like Pusilla pompilus algidus as well as the yellow and black mud dauber. So feel free to go and check those videos out. Somebody said to me that my video was great, but there's no such thing as man caused climate change. And that kind of struck me and made me think hard about it. I told him I would love to know if there really wasn't global warming because I feel as though it's something very important that we really need to fully understand and try to realize if there is a problem that there's things we can do to solve that problem. However, this person is saying that it's not real and actually sent me some research paper about it. Um, it. Simply to sum it up, they showed the correlation from NASA's research on climate change and the EPA's research on climate change and they correlated the two graphs. The two graphs differentiated. Um, NASA allegedly um, has modified their graph to show the rate of climate change increasing over time, whereas during like the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, late 1930s, early 1940s, um, was the worst um, on record for climate change. So they're saying that NASA has modified their graph. Now, I don't know what is true. Obviously, I don't work for NASA and I, I don't work for EPA either. But it is something that we need to take serious. And all the signs point to climate change, whether it be man-made or just climate change in general. I certainly think that there is a chance that it could be man-made. In fact, you can see the evidence of man-made impacts all over the world. Just pull up Google Earth and look any... You can take the greenest spot on the map and zoom in and you can see evidence of human disturbance. Whether it's man-made or an act of God, I don't feel that that's the most important thing here. The reality is that the effects are real and they will affect not only us, but all of the living organisms on our planet. 
I might wear this cross on my neck, but let's keep God out of it. This is our planet, this is our mess. This is our research, this is our chance. Do you know what happened to the Native Americans? What about the Amazonians? Population, millions. Ancient Egyptians, Romans, Greece, Mayans. Indus, Anasazi, Gobekli Tempe, Vikings, Easter Island. Look at these booming civilizations. One thing is for certain, they were here once, but now they isn't. Is not going to be any different if we do not take our planet serious. These were civilizations that have populations in the millions. Here's a real big difference. We're living in a global economic system with a population of 7,000 million. We are all connected. Look at this YouTube platform. One like, one share, one subscribe can make a world of difference and make a difference in the world you live in. Make sure the stuff you're liking and sharing is stuff you really believe in. No, she hasn't actually, okay, I just saw a little stinger ext uh, extracted. Now I'm gonna try to approach her from the rear of her apple. 